Welcome back, everybody, to the world of Hinami Zawa. I, uh, I, I had some time. I, I, uh, hmm. Chapter one. If it was the damn construction resistance, that makes no sense as to why they were targeting Keiji, but that's, that's the previous chapter. Let's just go forward and just, hmm. I have problems. I have problems with that statement, so it's probably not them. I need to just calm down and just continue the game, because if I don't, this will never get done, and I'll be here all night. And I don't want to be here all night, because holy shit. Holy shit. Anyways, hmm. Last time, we found out that it could very well be someone from the damn construction resistance who is murdering everyone. I'd, I'd like to know about that proof. I'd, I'd, I'd like to know about that proof. Is that proof? Like, like, is that actual proof? I don't, I don't think so. One more person disappears. Welcome to the world of curses, Keiichi. I hope you get comfortable. Yeah, what do you mean by disappear? They just vanish, never to be seen again? Oh, you better believe it. That's right! And suddenly without a trace. So... As we found out, one person dies, and then one person disappears. Every year, it has happened. We know from the last chapter, the first year, the damn construction manager died, and then the assailant was actually the one who uh, disappeared. The second year, the damn construction proponent, the the husband died, but his wife was never found. The same thing happened the third year. The priest died, but his wife, who apparently committed suicide, was never found. And then the fourth year, and the most important so far, is that um, uh, the uh, what is it? The sister-in-law of the individual from the first dam, um, she died. But that same individual, his son disappeared. Actually, the Hinamazawa has this one really old legend. It's how people opt for sac... Oh. Oh, this got interesting. They say they used to wrap the a living person up in a bamboo mat and let them slowly sink down into the bottomless swamp. This is new. It took three days and nights for them to sink. Okay. That's... You know, okay, at least Yumineko was quick with their murders, save for Eva Trust. But, you know, this is kind of fucked up. Okay, why are you laughing about this shit? This is fucked up. Like, what's the punchline there? It's the secret history of Hinamizawa. Everyone who's been in Hinamizawa for a long time knows it, but they don't talk about it. Hmm. Okay. This is a little bit more information than we got last time. Mainly because there's no time limit, I guess. There's not like, oh, we have to go. No, it's like, oh, we're just at this shrine during the day. I just want to see scary things for the fun of it. Okay, Takano. 
I know of a perfect island that you can enjoy. Not me. I got off that island. And I don't think I'll ever be going back for a long time. A long time. But that's for another day. This is now. The other person who disappears during the incidents, they're offered a sacrifice? Yeah, that that is fucked up. Someone dies and someone disappears. I thought someone was just straight up on a Kakashi in the last chapter, hence the name. But now they're telling me, oh no, fucking people back in the past? Oh no, they sacrificed those people. Fuck them. Like, holy shit. Fuck that. That is just, no. That is like 18 levels of just nope them right there. Whether they actually get sacrificed or not is a different issue, but every time something happens in the past, one person died and one person disappeared. The first one, as we know, the damn construction manager, um, there's one person who hasn't been arrested and that person just disappeared. As I mentioned earlier in this video. After that, the leader of the damn proponents, he fell from a cliff, but his wife also fell. She was never found. Which, uh, that's... If that's what happened to her, that's kind of fucked up. I could imagine, like, 10, 20 years later, someone's just digging down there and just finds a body, like... Holy fuck. But if not, then yeah, she was just straight up on a Kakashi. The year after that, the priest, as we mentioned, suddenly fell ill. And his wife left a suicide note. Now, in her note, she said that she was going to pacify Orishiro's death. Or Orishiro's death? No! the deaths of other people and pacify Orishiro's wrath. Sorry, I read the last word and Orishiro at the same time. Orishiro didn't die. Orishiro's a fucking god. Holy shit, Nate. Now see, this one, this one seems more like a curse. And she did commit suicide in the swamp, which is the same way that people were sacrificed, so it definitely makes sense in terms of how someone who was very into the Orishiro curse would react, especially if you're the Shinto, the priest's wife. You know, that, that definitely could have played a role in that. Someone dies, and someone goes missing every year. Wait until he finds out about Satoshi. Like, that, that's when it got fucked last time. Oh yeah, I used to sit in the same exact seat you sat in. Disappeared. It was a boy around my age, my, my age, named Satoshi Hojo. He's the nephew by marriage of the woman killed. She knew the boy. Oh. So, Shion knew Satoshi. And it looks like, unlike Rena, who denied even knowing Satoshi in the last chapter, Shion's like, no, this happened. He, dis he disappeared. It. Shion must have known him very well then. One person dies and one person disappears. That's actually a fucked up sentence, but that could actually make... You know, that would actually combine both the curse theory and the human theory. The first person is Orishiro's, but the second person is up to the villagers. That... Wow, that, um, that's straight-up catbox theory right there, where both truths can
can happen at the same time. There is no curse. Somebody kills the first person under the guise of the curse and someone takes away the second person to be sacrificed. Do you know that though? Because I could say it's the other way around. The criminal is in the village. We live in the show up here, and it's kind of hard to believe that people are committing murder like it's nothing. N no, no, that that still happens. As unfortunate as it is, it, that, that still happens. You know, now that I think about it, yeah, I she doesn't visit too much, save for talking with us. You know, if, if we never met her, that would explain why she didn't appear in Chapter 1, because she may not actually like Hina Mizawa, as opposed to her sister. Mion enjoys talking about Hina Mizawa all the time. So, Shion, on the other hand, doesn't. She was trying not to give me a bad impression of the village, so she didn't say anything. Again, I have my opinions on that, but I've spoken my opinions on that. Let's continue, Nate. Don't get back into that discussion until the next time it happens, then you can fucking rage about it again. And again. For the next eight fucking chapters. She wasn't rejecting the concept of curse, but she was strongly in belief that someone of the village was committing this. So she's very for the whole human side of the theory. Once upon a time, they looked so much alike. Now that you actually know them, they're very different people. I told you. I told you. My brothers are twins. When you actually get to know them, they are very different. And honestly, anyone who is a twin can attest to that. You are not a clone. You have your own thoughts and personality. You are not defined by your twin. You just happen to look the exact same as someone else. But that someone else doesn't necessarily agree with you. If someone from Hinamizawa was the culprit, then who is it? Like, how would they know? To be fair, it, it may not be from Hinamizawa. It could always be from Shishibon or Okunimiya. Yeah, everything that they said is circumstantial evidence. Do not take it 100% to heart, KG. Because, uh, you definitely went overboard last chapter. And probably will go overboard this chapter. This is just gonna be a pattern, isn't it? I'm not a detective or anything. That's right. That That's fair. You have the right to make your own opinion. Nox is, I think, 10th. Either 10th or 9th. No, it's 9th. 10th is no body doubles. So, you know, I just realized Mion and Chion, they would have to be introduced in the very beginning of, this, of the uh, whole thing in order for that to work with the Nox's Decalogue if one of them was a culprit. So, Yuma and Echo would have a field day if Mion and Xion were present in that story. Provided that they introduce Mion early on and Xion early on, I don't think it would be a problem. But it would definitely be, like, it, it would be essentially Chekhov's twins by that point. Like, you would have to use them in one chapter as a lead that the characters would have to look into. I only enjoy them from a curious onlooker's perspective. That's that's a fair assumption. You know, it's not like any of us are detectives. 
technically the only detective here is Oishi. Oh god, Oishi's the only one who can use blue truth. Dwell on that. Dwell on that hard, everybody. I, I don't think Xion likes Takano. Yeah, I, I don't want anyone to die or disappear either. And hopefully that doesn't happen this time. That's right. It slipped his mind. With all the mysterious events that have been going on, he kind of forgot that tomorrow is the Watanagashi Festival. You know, considering that she likes to look at this from an outside perspective, if she's not the victim because of the time reset, then she'll probably enjoy looking at this from an analytical view. <laughs> You're teasing the kid too much, are you? Are you really? Because you didn't have a problem with it last chapter, so why would you have a problem with it this chapter? Because fuck me in the end, am I right? Now Keiichi thinks it's all true. Yeah, and we know what happened when, when he did that in chapter 1. He fucking asked all these questions and people started going oogity boogity on him, and that was not okay. People were being mean to me, and I thought that my friends were committing murder. And they probably did. Or, at the very least, they were fucking possessed by Yoshiro. You listen to everything so earnestly. Never change, Keiichi. Never change. The stuff Takano said is all fiction. Well, that's good. I mean, we don't really have any proof that all this happened in the past. What I mean is all the sacrifices and shit happening way, way back. Well, at least everything returned back to relatively normal conversations. Yeah, we should get going. We've kept your sister waiting, and she's pretty jealous. And considering that I'm with you, she'll probably get really upset. Yeah, sorry, Mion. I, I was having the most interesting conversation. And now I know. And knowing is a copyrighted catchphrase. Most likely. I actually don't know if that's copywritten. Yeah, I, we'll, we'll be sure to tell Mion that you all are sorry for borrowing us, but hey, it actually gave us, the viewer, some context. Now we know that the gruesome murders actually have something to do with Hinami's always past in terms of the sacrificing. However, we don't have any concrete... Uh, evidence about that, so, I mean, it's all really up to interpretation. This was a very lore-filled episode, holy shit. Well, with all of the goodbyes, and at the 30 seconds till the end mark, I think now is as good as time to end off. So... We're good at listening. Thank you guys for watching. Unless there's a little bit more at the end of this. I think I'm right next to like one of those transitions. So let's let's actually see. Did you like my story? Oh, your story. It was pretty interesting. That is the that is the most fair way to say all of that, Keiichi. 
Yeah. You know what? You're on. I could always use a little bit more lore to reach my conclusions about what's going on. So next time, we'll talk to you on that. Hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully you don't die again. Or wait, no, you're the one who disappeared. Uh, Tomotake died. So, just be careful on your way home from Watanagashi. I don't want this to happen again. Oh, we know that she's just messing with us. She's the type to do that. Oh, well. Hmm. We may have screwed up. We're going to end things off here. 